Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the TOLIS Airbus A321 and today we're going to answer some of the questions that came out of the landing video uh, I made. I'll post a link to it here. Uh, I am a real world Airbus pilot with a few thousand hours flying the Airbus and I made a little tutorial on how to land this airplane in X-Plane and today we're going to answer some of the questions that came out of that. As always at the beginning of these videos this is not for any real world use it's just for us to use in our home simulators and to hopefully give you guys a bit more context on what we do with the real airplane. It's also not comprehensive, I'm doing the best I can just to talk about uh, what we can fit into the videos and what hopefully you guys are interested in uh, talking about. Thank you so much for the questions guys, I really appreciate it, it uh, it's what I enjoy doing. So uh, keep them coming and keep interacting and we'll uh, hopefully get you the content that you guys are looking for. So first of all, let's talk about the crosswind landings. This came up in a uh, question in the landing video and the question was do we need to put in any aileron whilst we're decrabbing uh, in a crosswind so I talked about in that video that on final approach or even in the flare um, you're going to have a bit of drift on so you're not pointing down the runway your airplane is pointing slightly into the wind and before touchdown you need to point the airplane down the runway otherwise when you land you'll be pulled off the side of the runway and it damages the landing gear and all sorts so we need to use the rudder to put it straight and in a normal airplane, a conventional airplane, if we put in the rudder to put the airplane pointing down the runway, by moving the wings through the air at that angle, so the uh, wind that is into wind, uh, it will actually get more lift because it moves slightly faster and therefore that wing will try and lift up and the other wing will try and go down and then you'll end up banking which you don't really want to do because uh, we're trying to land near enough on both wheels and maybe slightly on the upwind wheel. It's a great question. On the Airbus, the theory is um, that the fly-by-wire accounts for that. So you don't need to put in aileron to keep the wings level. If you do it gently and squeeze that rudder on at the right time, it won't actually require you to put in the aileron to keep the wings level. But having said that, in practice, in a very strong crosswind, you might find that that upwind wing tries to lift up anyway um, as the wind, wind gets underneath it, or if you don't land straight down the runway. And I'll show you that now. So here's the replay of that landing and as you can see we're coming down with uh, quite a lot of drift on as a, this is a near maximum crosswind and I'm going to pause it as we go just to show you uh, some of the steps but normal flare height just making sure we have time to remove that drift and as I said you can land with a little bit of drift they say up to uh, up to sort of five degrees as a maximum otherwise once you touch down you put a lot of strain on the wheels and the airplane will start to go off in the direction you're pointing and all sorts so here we go, entering the flare now, normal flare, now we're at the later stage of the flare and we can see the rudder start to get applied. And as that happens, this wing is going to start trying to lift because this wing is moving slightly faster forward and this wing gets slowed down slightly so we get that secondary effect of some roll. Now I'm going to do it in slow motion. So we've got that rudder, a bit more rudder coming in now, which you can see squeezing in, squeezing in. And if I look here, before I actually input anything, these spoilers have come up and you can see this aileron is ever so slightly higher because it normally droops um, on final approach. So on this side, the aileron's gone down slightly. It's trying to give that side a little bit more lift. And on this side, the spoilers have come up slightly and that aileron's lifting. And that's before I've inputted on the side stick. This is just the airplane trying to keep the wings level from my rudder input. So that is happening now. Shortly after this, I'm going to also put in my own aileron input because I want to get this wheel to land before this one ever so slightly. So just a couple of degrees of bank just to help uh, stop the airplane from drifting. If we don't do anything in maximum crosswind and we just let the airplane land and we put in the right rudder, as the airplane floats down the runway, if you float a bit too long and you haven't put in any aileron at all, you'll start to drift with the wind. So we'll go that way, obviously. So carry on slow motion and now you can see there that was my input. So I'll show that again. So here I started to put in a little bit of aileron as well. So these roll spoilers come up slightly more to get this wing to come down. This is not perfect and also there's a slight delay between the recording and the replay mode. So this doesn't quite line up with what happened, but it's pretty close. So I can show you what I'm talking about. So the short answer is no, you don't need to put an aileron 
when you're correcting the drift but you may need a little bit just because of the crosswind anyway so there we go a bit more just to get this wheel to touch down first and you can see we've already started to drift a little bit this is where it's very important to have that aileron in as well otherwise the wind gets under this wing and it will try and lift up so you can see here this aileron is, is up i'm trying to get this wing to stay level on touchdown and this one's down you don't want to hold that whilst you roll out because if you do by putting all the weight onto this wheel the airplane is going to get more drag on the left hand side so that is going to mean that with more drag here this wheel is pulled backwards and the airplane will try and turn more into wind and we don't want to turn into wind we're trying to keep it straight down the runway so you don't want to then hold side stick left for the rollout this is just to keep the wings level as we touch down or you know uh, close to level and now now both ailerons come up because i've got uh, the modification set so that the ailerons lift with the ground spoilers which is quite common these days even on the older airbuses uh, they've been fitted with that option depending on the airline and airplane of course we can also see this in the side stick movement so here we are if you look at the pfd we're about 90 feet so i'm just going to play through and i'll slow it down as we get into the flare like i say there's a bit of a delay between the two so we're starting the flare small corrections on the side stick for the final approach this is in slow motion remember so now we're flaring rudder is coming in and the airplane is starting to turn right and you'll see the ground spoilers lift up there and now I put in the aileron just before touchdown and you'll see them there even though I'm twitching the side stick every now and then so if I rewind that play it back at normal speed in goes the rudder spoilers now a bit of aileron as the side stick goes left and there we are and there we go so i hope that answers that question about landing in a crosswind um, and whether you need to use the aileron it's a bit of a complicated answer but that's why i thought i'd include it in the video so thank you very much for that question it's a great question another great question i've had is when do we disconnect the autopilot on a typical approach now the answer to this varies a lot it depends on the conditions on the day and the sort of approach you're flying if you're flying a category one ILS, so that's in not not very low visibility, so in quite nice conditions, then it's typical to disconnect it from maybe uh, anywhere from sort of uh, 500 feet to 1,000 feet would be on a totally standard sector. But you could easily choose to disconnect it earlier than that. Some pilots will like to fly uh, down the ILS uh, manually using the flight directors. If the conditions are a bit like in this video, so it's rough and rocking uh, with the weather and this is quite turbulent, then you'd probably leave the autopilot to do the work because you don't want to tire yourself out making it more, um, more difficult for yourself just for the sake of it. Especially if you're doing four or five flights that day uh, in windy conditions, you'd certainly let the autopilot take some of the strain for the approach. You'd still disconnect before you, the absolute latest and the absolute latest on a normal category one ILS approach depending on the airline procedures will be somewhere shortly after minima which is about 200 feet above the runway so you need to have it disconnected by then if you intend to manually land obviously if you auto land then you're going to leave the autopilot in it also depends on the airspace you're in so if it's busy airspace or if you're unfamiliar with the approach you might let the autopilot do it to give yourself more spare capacity in, uh, mental capacity to think about what's going on if it's busy you might want to leave it so that there's room for maybe there's an airplane on the runway in front and you want to have the autopilot still engaged in case you need to go around so you have to adapt it to the situation there's no perfect answer and it will be down to pilot preference a lot of the time as well but as I said we have to have it disconnected shortly after minima if we're going to manually land it but you'll probably disconnect earlier in relatively nice conditions even if it's a bit rough like this probably around 500 feet uh, you disconnect again that's entirely my opinion my preference uh, just to get your hand in at the flying before touchdown disconnecting the last second before touchdown could be a little bit challenging as well and here you go rocking and rolling over the motorway to Heathrow so not no perfect answer there for you I'm afraid but it does vary um, and it varies on the sort of approach if you're doing a non-precision approach the autopilot has to come out earlier depending on uh, what sort of approach you're flying
Another great question I've had is when would you consider doing a flap three? Well, a flap three is going to come down to a few things. Obviously, the runway length is going to be important, so your performance will be limiting. You'll need more runway to land flap three because, of course, uh, the airplane flies its approach faster and therefore it will need more runway to roll out. It's actually recommended um, by certain procedures that if you're expecting wind shear on final approach, so a big change in wind direction or speed uh, that's going to cause potentially an energy issue on approach, that you go flap three because the airplane has more energy as you fly down, you're slightly faster. However, in turbulent conditions, a lot of pilots prefer flap full because the engines will be spooled up slightly higher. You can see here, they're sitting around 50%, and that's probably the most they'll be. They could even be down in the 40s if it was a bit windier, high 40%. Whereas with flat full, the, the engine would be spooled up more, and it's a little bit more responsive at the higher N1 speed. So therefore, it reacts to speed changes a little better. Mostly that's in my opinion. So the reality is, it'll be pilot preference. In the 321, a lot of people like to land flap 3 because it's quite a small pitch change on landing. The airplane has nice amounts of energy, uh, so it can be it can be a quite a smooth way to land if you get it right. It also might be that you want to get further down the runway. So if you're landing on a long runway like in Amsterdam and you want to vacate near the end, then a flap 3 landing will work out better for you because you've got less drag, faster approach speed, and that's great. It could also be that you want to fit in with air traffic control. If you're in a very light airplane and your approach speed is going to be very slow, if you go flap three, it'll be slightly faster. So there's a few reasons. Again, no perfect answer. It'll be a lot of uh, down to pilot preference on the day. One thing to remember in the Airbus is that there are a lot of failures. For example, if you're landing in alternate law where you'll need to land flap three. Again, this isn't a comprehensive list of anything, but it's quite common in uh, some of those sorts of failures where you have to land flap three. So uh, pilots like to practice it every now and then as well to make sure they're used to it. Uh, in my experience, the reality is most landings on the 319 and the 320 are flap full. Uh, but then on the 321, I don't know, maybe 50-50, but that's just my opinion from what I've seen. Uh, people seem to change their minds about it. But like I said, it's up to pilot preference mostly. Another thing that may affect a flap 3 landing will be the go around performance. It could be that you need to make your approach in flap 3 because when we go around in the Airbus, we retract the flaps one stage. So if you're flap 4, you go to flap 3 for the go around. So if you're flap 3 and you go to flap 2, there's less drag. So in some airports, the go around needs you to climb a bit better. So you need to approach in flap 3 so that when you go around, you are in flap 2 and therefore less drag. So that's another reason that, that may force you into it. Quite rare, but that does happen sometimes. I will talk about go-arounds in another video, and here we can see me floating along the runway again as <laughs> in that first one. Final question for today then is, what's the difference in landing the A319, A320 and A321? Another great question, and I believe this one was from uh, Richard. So, there is a difference. Obviously, the 321 is heavier. It's got more momentum. So in the 321, as I said in my landing tutorial, you want to make sure you really have some sort of a flare going by 30 feet. So although you may have to input slightly before 30 feet to get the nose starting to come up by 30 feet, that's sort of typical in a 321. And from there, you can adjust it as you need to. In a 319, a light 319 or a 320, a light 320 especially, then you may find you can get away with letting the uh, flare start ever so slightly later so if you're flaring as you pass 30 feet then that would be uh, probably fine so the reality is maybe 10 to 20 feet earlier you'll have to make sure you've started some sort of a flare you may adjust it from there it may be too much that sort of thing but you need to get something in otherwise it has a bit more momentum so it will continue to sink into the runway uh, and there's a risk of a heavy landing so that's the main difference it's also a bit longer so it does uh, tend to handle crosswinds slightly differently 
you uh, you feel slightly different in the airplane. It feels heavier and it doesn't get pushed around quite as much because it's got that extra weight to it. So it's quite nice. A lot of pilots like landing the 321, whereas the 319 can be blown about a little bit because it's obviously lighter. It also, in my opinion, in the front of the 321, it can soften the landing. So it may be that you didn't think it was going to be that smooth and then because of the weight of the airplane and the length of it and so on it actually absorbs the landing a bit better it has slightly different tires as well so it is quite nice to land the 321 compared to uh, some of the 319s that's not to say I dislike landing the 319s it's just there is some some difference to it which you have to get used to It's a great question. I hope I've answered everything for you guys today. Let me know uh, in the comments if there's anything else. And also let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see uh, in these videos. As always, uh, I like to hopefully provide the sort of video that you guys are interested in. Thank you very much for watching. I know this was a slightly different style, uh, but hopefully see you again in another tutorial or flight soon.